Floating, 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 floating. Minds floating, opinions floating, and literal floating children. Not balloons. I thought there were a couple of balloons in this, but all so much floating. We saw it. Yes, we did. And boy, this was interesting to say the least. And when and I kind of both and uh, well. I do and do not put it in quotations as interesting, because this, yeah, 90% on Rotten Tomatoes, I don't think it's, so many mixed feelings about this. Yeah, same here. Uh, I suppose, quickly, let's just talk about what we thought of the original, we both, we've both seen it. I saw. Well, when did when did you see it? Like I, age wise, or like it was it was years ago. It just was something that was on TV, so I I checked it out. Okay, I act I actively like found it on YouTube when I was like thirteen or fourteen, and it was it was somewhat engrossing, but it ultimately wasn't that scary. Like I watched it in the peak of my like horror love days back when I was obsessed with Halloween and Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, it's not it it's not that scary at all. And Tim Curry, well, on rewatch, Tim Curry is hilarious, and he's not he's not intimate he's not a scary or intimidating clown at all. He's an actual good clown. Yeah, he's kind of like a clown for adults in a way. Pretty much, and, but. The fucking ending of that movie, at least you can agree, is fucking a pile of dog shit compared to this ending. Well, it's a giant fucking spider. Well, a giant spider that they push over like a cow and everyone lives hunky dory except for the the two uh the two of the seven who die. Let's just get this out of the way right now. Um this this one runs circles around the original for two very obvious reasons. One, this is uh this is not made for TV. Hell no. This, you know, it, the other one had had to kind of. Uh, it was a three-hour miniseries. It was a three-hour miniseries, and it had and it was made for television, so everything had to be kind of softened a little bit. Softened and padded out. This one, this one uses both its extra budget, its rating to its advantage, and it cre and it creates something that's far more believable, far more intense, far more gritty and engrossing. And yeah, than than the original. And also, I mean, it's not it's not 3 hours. That being said, this movie still feels way longer than it needs to. Um so with that in mind, yeah, the the original is mostly just for me is just kind of a camp fest. Uh I like I mean, I like Tim Curry, but not for the reasons I'm supposed to. Uh the kid the kid aspects of it actually are too, almost too good for that movie. The kids were great in it, and it's, it's almost like it's like it's like if you mix Stand by Me with Friday the Thirteenth. Uh, <laughs> somewhat. I'd probably try and think of a different horror. Well, I don't think I don't know if you'd be able to connect like a legit horror series that would make it make sense. Right, but I mean, like, I'm saying, what I'm saying is that it's... Or it's Stand By Me meets his killer clones from outer space. Okay, there you go. <laughs> what, what I'm saying is that it was basically, both this and the original was basically trying to blend genres, horror and kind of that classic coming-of-age type kid's story. Yep. And I'll be honest, neither one of these movies make it work. Mostly because... Like just like in the original, the kids stuff is too good, and the horror stuff kind of falls behind. But what's sad about it, it, at least with the with the remake, is that it could have worked. I really think it could have worked, but this whole movie just what killed it for me was about a half hour into it when I realized it had nothing. The horror aspect of this movie had nothing in its back pocket. Other than a lot of jump scares. Jump scares. Oh my god. There are a lot of this jump scares movie, in this. This movie, 90% of every horror aspect, its payoff, is a jump scare. We The, the door creaks open and slowly walk over. Jump scare. It's like, oh, what's that over there? Jump scare. We turn the corner. Jump scare. Jump scare. Jump we, scare. Jump we, scare. We, bo we both had our hands up 
waiting for waiting in anticipation. Yes, like, we were counting down. Five, four, four. Three. I forgot how to use my fingers <laughs> for a second. Four, three, two, one. Bam. Bam. And we were right a few times. Yes, we were. That's yeah. And when it becomes so predictable like that, that shatters the horror immersion. For me personally, I don't think jump scares work. When they're overused, maybe okay. In in a lot of great horror movies, yes, there are jump scares. And Examples: uh, uh, Evil Dead Two, The Shining, uh, even Alien. They, okay, those all use jump scares, but there's here's here's the difference. The, the only one I've seen of that is The Shining, and I do agree with that. The pa- the pacing and the like actual patience of it makes you, it pay off. Yep, you need you need proper setup of atmosphere. You need you need tension, and you need to especially use them sparingly. Like I would say, in a in an average like hour hour and a half movie, no more than no more than five times. This movie has like twenty of them in a two hour watch, and it's and again it's just so irritating after a while. I had I had, I put earplugs in because H- homemade earplugs. Because per- since he forgot his own, he had to go to the bathroom and roll up uh, paper towels and put them in. It, it was improvised, so I put it in, and when you do that, you realize just how thin a lot of the a lot of the horror aspect of this movie is, because that's all they do. It's trying to catch you off guard with loud noises. It's like the equivalent of your dickhead friend playing with the stereo and shouting "boo" and be like, "Ha! Huh? I totally scared you." It's like, no, you didn't. Okay, you're just being an ass. Let me let me bring things back to par. Okay, you you were just saying uh, the jump scare needs to have atmosphere, tension, and I forgot what the third part was. Use sparingly. Sparingly. Okay, I'm gonna try and address all three of those. Atmosphere. This for me at least. This did have a this did have a lot of good atmosphere, and it made sure that it was grim and uncomfortable. Luckily, the direction in this actually actually did take advantage of well, again the, a film budget in order to make in order to have camera shots and or and in order to have editing that actually made you feel like this was this was not a good place to be tension well tension okay those two aspects are I'm gonna try and combine those sparingly yeah these were there were a lot of them but unfortunately because of the writing and the premise they have seven kids to get through in order to have each one of them experience the same clown but they so, don't but they don't all need to be do, I, 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 I'm not supporting it I'm supporting it okay. I'm just saying that is that's why they sort of backed themselves into a corner. With trying to make everything, with trying to make the jump scares and the actual, like payoffs, like they couldn't, they couldn't spread that out sparingly because of the necessity of assessing each kid. And well, like well, I get that, I get that every kid has got to have some kind of experience with Pennywise, but what I, what I was trying to say is, is that not every single one has to be the payoff is another jump scare. I mean, one it you. Really, but, the most okay. effect the most effective horror elements are quiet or almost damn near silent. Like, can I, can I just say one thing that almost see here, here? Here's one example. One one thing that worked, I thought was going to work so well until they ruined it with a jump scare. There's one bit of the of the movie where one of the characters, I forget his name, but his little his little brother Georgie, he dies. Bill. Bill? Oh, yes. that's his name. Okay. I know all of the kids by name. Okay, so Bill is in his little brother's room. He's uh, you know, he's reminiscing. He's he still feel he still feels terrible about his brother dying, as anyone would. Or it, or has he like he constantly likes to believe gone missing. Yes, um, and then you and you see in the corner of the room there is a there is a small shadow in the doorway, and it walks away, and you hear you hear little like. Clopping noise, like like footsteps. little wet footsteps, and you come out, and it's and there's muddy footprints, and you know that for me works because one, it's it's quiet, but also you have to complete it in your head. It's like, oh, that must be Georgie, you know, with his it's, 
they say the scariest things are the stuff that you have to think about, that you have to complete in your head and you have to think about. That's what works so well for me because none, none of it was loud and obnoxious. It wasn't accompanied by dun, 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 dun kind of music. It's just, it's just happening. And then he goes downstairs and he sees uh, Georgie in the corner of the room and he's kind of talking to him. But then, then they throw it all the way because you see in the trailers he's like yell fuck too, yell fuck too, and it just gets louder and louder. And then it, and then it, and then it goes quiet for a second. And then Pennywise comes up. <laughs> just, uh, it's. <sighs> You you had something so good there. It could have been it could have been a lot more terrifying. How, how would you have fixed it? How would I have fixed it? Okay, keep keep it quiet throughout the whole time as Georgie's talking to him, and maybe have him slowly start to uh, change the voice. Change the voice. Maybe because what happens is he starts decomposing everything. All that happens without any kind of music or or like build building sound, and then maybe maybe as he falls apart, then maybe Pennywise comes up not, again, not accompanied with loud noises and screaming, but then his presence is what completes the scare. It's a quiet. It's it's kind of like a jump scare in the sense that it you know it pops out at you. Uh, so, but it's, a, so visual, not audio. A visual jump scare, not an auditorial one. There you go. There's some. There's another. Okay, one more. One more really really good aspect of this movie that they fucked up at the end. Um, the, honestly, this was my favorite horror aspect of the whole thing. One of the the, the girl character. Beverly. Beverly. She comes home. Her dad her dad's asleep on the couch watching something on TV. You only kind of hear it out of like your peripheral hearing, but you hear there's like this woman on the screen with these kids and she's talking about how it's like you should go down to the sewer and you'll float to you know she says you'll float too and and it, but but it's done, it's played straight and it and it does not draw attention to itself. It's, it's not recognized at all. She goes to grab a pair of scissors so she can cut her hair. Yeah. So, and, and that's, see, that to me was, was the best part. It's, it, it reminds, it reminds me of PT almost where you're walking through this hallway and you hear the radio talking about this man murdering his, his husband. And out of nowhere, the guy's like, oh, man, touch. a man murdering his husband. Or, sorry. His Man wife. murdering his family. <laughs> I was gonna say a gay, a gay couple in a horror movie. That's a first. Sorry. Man, <laughs> man murder, man murdering his uh, his family. That that is like playing on a constant loop in the background. Out of nowhere, you hear, "Don't touch that dial." Now we're just getting started, and it's, okay, it, it's like it's stuff like that. Little little touches like that that don't you don't doesn't you know it doesn't draw attention to itself. But it helps make the whole scene feel that much more unsettling and creepy because you just don't know. You d you're not you're not quite you don't quite fully grasp how far we're going with it. But but when but when the music starts playing and the and the it gets loud, it starts getting louder and louder. Loud, and, pause and then loud again and then loud again. It it ruins it for me because that's not really scary. That's just annoying is when you do it over or, and or over and just, over or again. It's just, re yeah, just repetitious. Yeah. So that's, that was my thing. And, and I will say though, the Pennywise himself is pretty good in this movie. He is super fucking menacing. Oh my God. There's uh, granted. We both have never had a fear of clowns. I don't ever. have a fear of clowns. But but this guy actually could can be creepy at times. Absolutely, because he, he actually does have a creepy smile. The buck teeth really do help in it. If he wasn't, I mean, again, if it if it wasn't every aspect of him being a jump scare, it, it he really fit would fit the part perfectly. <clears throat> but even he can't escape being silly sometimes. The the two the two parts that actually kind of shattered his intimidation for me in this movie was you see in the trailers they're, they're going through the slideshow and everything and it, yep. and you see his his mother's face like turns into hit turns into uh, him yeah it's, it's the the face that it's stuck on is like. yeah that's all mm. I'm not exaggerating that's it's it's just. <laughs> you actually do it better. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You ran through your bit. Uh, I 
I st okay. I f I fell for the jump scares in this, which well, I don't think means they worked. It just mean or or I, I should say, just because they work doesn't mean they're good. I'll tell you which ones worked. Out of the seven of them, I I wish I would have gone through this before uh, going through. Okay. A few of them did work. They worked with Mike. It worked with Ben. It worked with... Well, it did work... For me, the whole thing worked with Bill. I didn't think the payoff or the jump scare was that bad because he actually did try to, like, kill him and grab him. And I think... Yeah, okay. Those are the only three that actually did work. Eddie didn't work. Um, Eddie, Beverly... Um, Fuck, fuck, Richie, and who, uh, oh, I forgot, Stan, his, his actually did work, so four of them, so four of them did work for a handful of reasons, Ben's worked because it actually did visually, like, it, okay, Ben's worked because he's stuck in a basement of a library, and this, this figure just starts walking down the stairs. You don't see the top half of it, and then all of a sudden, it's completely headless. That, for me, that worked because, well, attributing to what you said earlier, it was quiet, and it actually did build to a good visual, to a good visual scare instead of being completely auditory. And admittedly, as, admittedly, the movie starting off, I didn't mind so much about any of that. Uh, like like the jump scares and stuff. It was only it was only as it kept going on. I realized this is all I'm gonna get. Okay, but what but what I'm saying is that the for me at least the visuals that they actually do try and experiment with make up for the fact uh, make up for the giant loudness that did happen later on in them. Because again, particularly with Ben's headless things creep me out. So as soon as he's being as soon as Ben's being chased through these Hall of Library cards by just this headless thing as soon as a head finally just pops up that that for me was actually still scary and the idea of that still carried through aside from the like auditory jump scare uh what you explained perfectly what worked with bill and what i thought still worked about it was that he was intimidating enough and actually tried following through on what he wanted to do, aside from Tim Curry, which all he did was just stand around, uh, talk about how things float, and n not even attempt to try and kill these kids. That's what didn't work with Eddie's, is because he just still stood around the house. Um, which, I mean, I get... I get to a certain degree, yes, the uh, this, thi this thing feeds off of fear. Mo more, mostly. Well, okay, it feeds off of children, but it... I guess they taste be better when they're when they're scared, but this thing is damn near omnipresent. It can go anywhere in this town, wherever it wants, however it wants. So I don't know why it's so hard to kill these kids. I don't know why he doesn't do it. Why he doesn't go fully through on it either. Well, we obviously do know because they need to stretch it out to two hours. Well, yeah, but and I, and I mean there's. It, yeah, if, if he did that, we wouldn't have a story. If he was smarter, if he was smarter about what he would do, it it wouldn't be uh, there wouldn't be a movie, really. Absolutely, but still, I can't help but fall for how yes, this did have a budget, and yes, it did use its visuals. It, it did use its visuals to it to its advantage. Yeah. An another well, the other kid that worked, uh, Mike, he. And he can end actually with this one. Pennywise can summon the souls that he that he um, that he takes away, because he he pops up with these bodies from hanging inside of the sewer, burning bodies that are trying to get out of a door, uh, which he did with Mike and just showed himself hanging in a meat locker. Mm -hmm. um, which other ones? Ben, Bill, Mike. Fourth one, fourth one. Fuck, 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 fuck. Uh, Stan, he that that one actually did work also because it did put it, because it was um, the setting of it was claustrophobic as well. It did build to it did build like very well with just this picture falling randomly out of nowhere when the camera isn't focusing on it. As soon as the picture is put back up, nothing's on it. And what was in the picture is now in human form. 
uh, bringing the su- bringing the supernatural uh, benefit to Pennywise's powers, and luckily the kid actually gets out of it. Well, not necessarily easily, but just safe and uh, legitimate. Just get the fuck out of Dodge and slam the door behind you. Right, and and it, like I said, it 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 would work if if it was if it was quieter. It really would. It, because it, because they do it again a second time and again and again and again and, and I again, feel like well, well not just well uh, like they do it again throughout the movie with everyone else but I mean they they repeat the same scares twice even with the when you mentioned the with Stan scare it, what it is is it, it's like this this uh, surreal paint surrealist painting of a woman with her like a really warped face and everything and sharp teeth and when she pops up. It's it's actually kind of scary, but but then you know loud noises banging on a banging on a piano ass end of a piano and everything, and then it does it again at the end of the movie, and it feels like I'm playing Outlast where it's just like clop 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 clop. <sighs> oh, I really I really wanted to like this movie, but. I really only like half of it. Let's uh, we could talk about the the part that we do like the kids. The kids are still great in this. Fantastic. And, and luckily, they still focus on the kids. There's no flashback element. There's no adult like yeah. forwarding them forwarding them to adults. Yeah. To, although although this movie does. Uh, let's just say this movie never. Or, or we we don't get to see them as adults, but it hints that there's going to be a sequel with them. It as never fully defines that it's over. Yes, it says chapter one at the end of it. So just like just like Marvel, it's got to franchise itself. Oh God, Stephen King's multi multi film universe. <laughs> So in, but they don't do the any of the good ones like The Shining. They're gonna have the Tommy Knockers. They're gonna have the Lagaliers. Fucking, um, they're gonna have Dreamcatcher in there with the shit weasels. It's yeah, um, but yeah, these uh, these these kid actors like perfect. You know, top yep. top of the line. I one of them was from Stranger Things, which definitely shows that these guys were definitely seeking out quality. It was I mean, Richie I mean, Richie the kid in the glasses. Oh, he that's that he, was the guy from Stranger Things. That's one of the main kids from Stranger Things. Damn it. Yeah, Richie he Rich, was the most annoying character. Yeah, Richie did suck in this. And not that not that he was a bad actor. Kid kids acting was fine, but he was written to be the most obnoxious douchebag. The the kid, and, but the, but the thing was, he wasn't even that obnoxious in the in the other one. And granted, it was no. he was played by Seth Green, who was one of the most likable people on earth. Ah, uh, that's. I'm just saying that because I'm a gigantic debatable. robot chicken nerd. That's debatable, but but I mean, I, yeah, the, this kid this kid has no off switch. Nope. It seems like even even when his friends are about to be eaten by Pennywise, he has to crack jokes. He still has to crack jokes. He still has to make all these sexual comments. It's like, it's like, oh man, that list is as long as my dick. Or, or oh, oh, it just, it he he does not stop. If this, kid, or, do, or do you only see the clown if you're a virgin? Yeah, because I know it won't get me. <laughs> and it just, and it just further breaks up breaks up the tension and the atmosphere that they're setting up. And it's, it tries to well. <sighs> Only do, you only can get horror comedy to work if you have a balance of it. If it's oh, yeah. thrown in randomly, you, we've seen we've seen you know genre blending horror comedies work before. Uh, just, for you, Krampus, uh, Cramp- Shaun of the Dead, oh, Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters, yes, Evil, Evil Dead Two. I've I haven't seen any of the Evil Deads. Oh, we gotta we got Halloween's coming up. We gotta see those. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. but but yeah. So the the kid aspect's too good. It it outshines the horror aspect because here you've got you got a lot a lot of talented kid actors. You got decent writing that writes them authentically. And luckily, direction uh, good direction because their chemistry is amazing. Yeah, e- even though they they, they the- toy with. Uh, the love triangle between Bill, Bev, and Ben. But it's actually handled surprisingly well. I this this movie handles romance 
well without feeling forced, unnecessary, or just that kind of stupid, mm. awkward, picking my tongue up from off the floor because I've never I, talked to a girl before. For once, I disagree and say that it was, like, damn awkward at some points. Really? Like, well, th- particularly the quarry scene where they go cliff jumping, blah, blah, blah. Well, okay, uh, that, that scene was just weird altogether. They all go to this quarry to jump jump into, jump into off a cliff into some look, water look, cl- in their whitey tighties. But then, okay, yeah, that's really fucking weird. They all shop at the same store and they all wear whites. And I would just, the, the, I lean the, over. That's what, that's what I told you. They all wear the exact same underwear? Really? Yeah. I lean over to you. It's like, don't these kids have swimsuits? They're not that poor. They live in good homes. Like, do they just not want to ride home in their wet swimsuits and get wedgies or like and, chafe everywhere and even beverly shows up and goes swimming in her underwear it's uh, like okay this, girls for this girls, would have been really awkward if we all had swimsuits and she didn't okay that oh my god that would be really bad but luckily that actually does um pull off more like chemistry and that actually was funny when she oh uh, you're not gonna jump in sissies rip off the dress and be like wee nothing mm-hmm. to it yeah um, but yeah, partic- what I thought was awkward was all the guys staring at the one chick while she's like laying down Sun or tanning. Bathing, yeah. And, um, I mean, that's, that's kind of the, that was kind of just the one, one bit they did the rest of the, the rest of the movie. They don't, they don't rely on that. Yeah, that is. And in fact, some of the guys don't even, aren't even really interested in her, which is S- nice because Stan, Mike, um, uh... Eddie and Richie aren't interested. Again, it's only Bill and Be- Bill and Ben that have interest in her. And Ben actually saves Bev, but mm-hmm. yet she still doesn't go for him in the end, even though she figures out that he is the poetic one of the group. Yeah. Uh, Which is yeah, I don't know. That well, that that was the disappointing part for me. It, that was actually one of the really good parts I actually liked about the first about the first one is that as soon as she does find out that he that he's always been interested in her and he has always had the eye for her she still goes for him but then again bill already explains that he's like either married or got a girlfriend or something yeah but yeah that part that part i actually liked out of like the character out of the adult piece from the other one even though the rest of the adult shit was shit yeah speaking of uh adult pieces the one thing that's brought over from the from the adults part of the storyline into the kids one is the bullies turning into a psychopath now this guy was already halfway to psychopath way before pennywise ever said anything to him he was carving okay so the scene where the bullies confront okay and a lot of the story is similar to the other one. The only part that's different is the climax and uh, do, 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 like one or two parts of like the end of the second act. But everything everything else is incredibly similar uh, to the other one, just story and storyline wise. So yeah, when Ben is confronted by the bullies, it's only... Uh, it's only hinted that he's going to get a knife stuck in his gut from the bullies. Like, oh, going to carve you open, fat boy. And then he escapes. In this one, he, uh, uh, Henry Bowers, he actually tries carving his name into Ben's stomach. He actually gets an H in there. Like, Jesus Christ, kid, what the fuck is your deal? But later on, later on, we do find out what his deal is. Yeah. Well... Yeah, his dad. His dad's a piece of shit. He a uh, piece of shit cop. Yeah, that's that's an, that's a cherry on the cake. Cause if you have an abusive parent, that's one thing. But if you have an abusive parent, that's the law. That goes double for their fucking kids. So Pennywise sends him a gift, just like in Animal Crossing, a, on a on a fucking balloon. <laughs> um, it's it's a, straight from the Tom whatever store. Yep, it Tom Tom Nook store. It's a it's a switch blade. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so he murders. Okay, this is one of the parts that ruins one of the good, the only really, really good horror aspect of this movie, which was, uh, you know, the the bit on the TV that was playing in the background that was saying stuff Lamb, that Lamb Chop Slay Along. Yeah. 
So what ends up happening is that he looks onto the TV. His dad's sitting on the couch asleep and everything. And then, and then she looks and says, Henry, kill him, kill him, Henry. And then they all start chanting and shouting. Kill them all. As soon as he does like kill him, he's like, kill them all, and kill then, them all. And then the lady turns into Pennywise. He's like, God damn it. You, it was so good before when it was just in the background and stuff, but then you put it at the forefront. You make it loud and obnoxious. Well, because it, just... it, it needs to get the attention of the kid. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. He's already he's already sick. He's already screwed up. He's well, ready that, to kill that, him. That's how he gets the di- but that's how he gets the direction to go for the others. No, it it it, wor- it works so much better the other way. So for so. In order to fix it, you would just like not it, not try and tell him go for the others. Well, I mean, you could still have you could still have the stuff playing on TV. You could still have it stuff Pennywise would say. What I'm saying is is that don't draw so much attention to it. Don't make it so obvious, so loud, so you know Pennywise shows up on the TV screen and everything and stares and smiles at him and everything. I I don't know. I just want more subtlety, I guess, is what I'm saying. Because the best kind of horror movies have subtlety to them. They're they they work on a on a deeper level, honestly. This one could work on a potentially deeper level, but instead it's going it's just going for the very lazy, in your face, scary kind of route. And s- at le- okay, at least they didn't have Pennywise appear in the moon. That was one of the fucking ri- most ridiculous things from the other one. And at least this one was more intimidating because it actually had an actual murder associated with it instead of fucking... Instead of Pennywise popping up in a moon and then having the clown turn into a fucking dog that, like, eats whatever it sees. That yeah. <laughs> just, just because it's not as corny as the original doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's good. I personally saw it better. It is it is better by comparison, but that still doesn't mean it could be as good as it as it as it could be. I uh, okay, I'm not all right, all right. I well, I would be lying if I if I said that that scene was perfect because as soon as that well as soon as they started chanting, I started giggling because when they're trying to put together like this whole sing along thing and actually throw in a clown a legitimate clown when they're actually everyone's chanting for me that just seemed a little silly yeah there's a few other things that kind of ruined pennywise's intimidation in this i already mentioned the face mm-hmm. yeah, but but there's also uh when he's inter- when he's uh introduced in the sewers and it's like no introducing pennywise the dancing clown you figure it's he's just going to he's just going to pop out and nope he starts dancing I mean, like, <laughs> and I mean, like, doing that no, sort of... No, it's the, yeah, it's the split leg hoedown. And I'm just like, really? Really? That was, no, okay, that was hilarious. This, again, shatters all the immersion. Or, well, or all the... No matter how many... The tension. Te- no matter how many teeth he's try he tries to show. Right, which he has this. Okay, we know we. You remember Pennywise in the original had lots of sharp teeth and everything. This one ups the ante tremendously. Oh his, God! His, his mouth, like a snake, just completely unhinges, and, and and his and his actual teeth extend outward also. Yeah. So it's literally like, it's coming out to try and get you. That part, I will say, has some genuinely scary imagery to it, especially one at the end where his face is his mouth covers his entire face extends outwards and you see and she sees hell down his throat he, he she literally sees his soul catcher it's yeah it, it that that kind of stuff is terrible you know what it reminds me of it reminds me of the jack in the box from krampus <laughs> <laughs> yep uh, but for me but i thought the jack in the box was a little bit weird and ridiculous but yeah this one is way more well for me, this one was way more intimidating because you actually do get to see what possesses and what essentially takes away the takes away the soul of the victim. I uh, there was I read some articles. I don't know I don't know how much of this is true or not, but I read some articles 
that some of these kids uh, were traumatized working with this guy, and some of them needed counseling in the in dur- during filming. Oh boy. Well, then, the, well, I guess the director did his job a little too well. Or the, trying to or create the actor. The I kind of want to see some behind-the-scenes footage with this guy. Like, what happens when it's when the director yells, cut? It's like, okay, kids, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> if he tries to act <laughs> happy like a real clown. Yeah. Ugh. All right. Um, uh, what else? So, I mean, it's... I really hesitate to call this movie bad, but it's... It's a, it's a really good, some if if not gruesome coming of age story trapped inside a really by the numbers jump scare heavy horror movie, with a with a surprisingly intimidating uh you know villain villain who does have his moments from time to time of of like actual intimidation despite me not finding clowns scary at all. But what you, you don't need to necessarily find clowns scary. Period. You just need to find, you know, or you just need to, like, actually be afraid of the character and not necessarily what he's representing. Pennywise was actually like creepy in this. Like he actually, he actually is menacing. He, well, uh, luckily we actually do see or. At least I thought he was intimidating because he actually did attempt to, like, do what he, do what he does, eat the kids. He actually does try and eat Bill. He actually does try. What well, he sort of tried to eat Ben. Uh, what well, the fucking sink scene from what well, with Beverly? He actually did try with like using hair extensions to like try and pull her down the drain, but he just settled for shooting blood in her face. Um, he didn't try and get Mike. He did try and get Richie. Uh, but then again, the, uh, that was when the repetition was at its peak. Yeah. And, like, the jump scare, the pacing, the... That's, that's my one thing, is that you don't, you don't really, you can't scare me with loud noises anymore when I know that's all you're gonna do. If you, if you want, if you really want to try and scare me, you know, where, where you're expecting a jump scare and where it just stays quiet... That's the that's the real like terrifying bit. Like uh, one of the one of recent horror movies I've seen, and by recent I mean a couple of years, uh, the Babadook. That that's like practically what the whole movie is built on. Is like every time you expect there to be a jump scare, there isn't, and it stays quiet, and it stays like you know you you. I am like biting my lip. It is so tense. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Early on, the tension is really there, it. But it does it, it's it, do, be- it does die off through the repetition, though. Yeah, it's it's there because you have that element of unknown and surprise. But when you keep doing it, well, you, you've 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 played your hand. And like I said, I think that's due to the writing and the premise backing itself into a corner, backing the direction into a corner. Yeah, I mean, even even something like uh, like like one of the kids finds a missing poster of themselves. I could think it was Richie. Yeah, I could think that would be that would be a, an effective way of scaring the audience if it was just <laughs> something you saw. In the background, but instead he the, picks it. The payoff was re- was really like predictable. He's in a well, and he says his main fear. Well, well I'll actually try and address that later. His okay. main he says his main fear is clowns. Uh, well, and also it's at the point where Richie has not been individually scared by the clown yet. Mm-hmm. So Richie is isolated in a room. Guess what? He's surrounded by clown dolls and. Uh, which could work. It really could work. But it didn't. But what does it pay off to? Pennywise jumps out and scares him. But he, okay, it's worse, though. The, uh, he sees a casket, takes off the lid, and he sees, well, uh, it, sees- it says found on the inside of the casket, and instead of it actually being him, it could have been, like, a full mannequin or, like, actual body of him, but no, it's a doll. Why the? F- How is that scary when, when we know that it's artificial and it can't be him? If it was actually him in there, if it was an actual duplicate in there, that would have actually been creepy. Yeah. So that's. I guess that's. 
That kind of sums up my thoughts. We're just kind of we're just kind of going in circles at this okay. point. Okay. Here's There's... one. Here's one more thing though. The general the general like th- um, philosophy or idea behind it that it feeds off of fear and as long as you don't have the fear, it can't. It well. Obviously, if you don't have the fear of it, it can't scare you. But uh, also, if you don't have the fear, you take away its power. Do you think that was like a legitimate? Do you think that was a legitimate reason for Pennywise dying off, or do you think it was just like a bull a bullshit like excuse for the kids not to one hundred percent kill it? Well, I mean that's just the that's, idea. That's the theme of the whole movie and book. Is like overcoming your fear as as like as both as children as and as adults. So, I don't I don't think that's necessarily. No, no, I I I think I think that or, or, that aspect or, or, works or do you, fine. Or do you agree with it? Do I agree with what? Like the idea, what well, just the that one can have the ability to just let go of fear, even when even if you're seeing it. Because if. if I don't know. For me, the idea of fear... The concept, well, just, the concept of overcoming fear is, like, you know, one's through, like, brute, brute strength and everything. Brute strength, courage, but... Or, or re- like, real real courage is not, is not not having fear. It's that you face it regardless of having it or not. And I think that's really what, what these kids are. They may not... They probably are still scared of it, but they're not going to let it hurt their loved ones or whatever Mm -hmm. so maybe that's maybe that's the real theme of the story i don't know that that part that part i i it's it's fine for me it does prove the idea of unity though yeah because when we and they actually the kids actually find it out for themselves that's one thing that well another added thing to the good part the kids they're smart in this and they are to an extent what would be the extent well they're they're so bent on uh, getting this this clown it, Pennywise and everything, but they they charge headlong into this without thinking, really. Okay, I do agree with that. Um, they go into this like decrepit house, like, and as soon as I well, as soon as we saw that house, Eddie is the first one to see it, and that's where he's confronted by Pennywise. As soon as you see that house, that just ruins all the illusion of. Oh gee, I wonder if something scary is happening in there. I don't I hope they don't go into it later. That shattered it a bit. Um but it, but as soon as Bill like finds out oh where that's where it is, uh they just go in head first. I leaned over to you saying, "Why don't they like step back and have a plan and then go in?" Because because after that uh they get split up and shit happens. But then again, then again, I I would, in in my mind, I'd be thinking to myself, this is a fucking supernatural clown. It's completely omnipresent. How do you fight something like that? Yeah, but, that, but it that, turns that part but it, was stupid. But it turns out all you have to do is hit it a bunch of times and stab it a bunch of times and push it down a well. Like, okay, I, I, again, you you're you're supernatural, omnipresent, all knowing, shape shifting. But you still got your ass handed to by a bunch of kids. Here, that part I don't. Qu- that part di- that's the disconnect for me. This is the best I think that I can put it together, with the kids fighting back and no, and them finding out and knowing that they can do damage to it and that they can actually fight it off. That would decrease that that those acts alone would be able to decrease their fear which they explain gives him power and as soon as the f- and as soon as their fear decreases and he like becomes powerless that that is how like he can be defeated is just the routine acting of fighting back and no and knowing that like knowing that your inner strength can persevere okay well uh, adding at, more to the philosophy at at the same time Pennywise could have had could have dealt with these kids much quicker and easier, but but he doesn't. That's so. what happens when you try and throw a supernatural force into a regular everyday environment. Yeah. So, I mean, you, at this point, you kind of figure it. It's got it's got some good elements here, but the horror aspect just falters completely. And it's sad too because it has it. I see it working so well. 
but they throw it all away with with the jump scares. I can't, and I keep hammering this idea. Jump scares are not scary when that's all you have. Big fucking shock. I like this more than you. Yes. And I hate it. I do hate it when that happens because I honestly like it better when both you and I it's like not, something. It's definitely not like a don't breathe situation where it's like, <laughs> I, where it's like, I despise this movie. I think, no, I see, I see the good in it. And I even see some aspects of it. Like the parts I don't like working under you know better direction and and everything but they just they don't they don't do it it's, so for so for you it's just a basic definition of a mixed bag it's a it's a mixed bag with that better better care and attention could have been amazing with have, with very loud shit happening yes uh, for me i still i still really liked this Again, mostly because of the comparisons to the original. This is light years beyond that. Well, I don't think for, that's for, enough. I for, don't. I just want to say I don't think just being better than the original is enough. And luckily, I don't think. Well, I don't think that alone. The kids are still great in this. Um, it actually for and I think it actually does examine like bits of psychology with with Bev with. Um, with Henry Bowers, uh, fuck with, and with the like, and test and testing the ideas of unity with the kids, uh, and I and yeah, Pennywise was actually fucking intimidating and scary in this. Uh, he At did, times, yes. Well, m for me, it was most of the time. And again, I'm not afraid of clowns. I'm just afraid of the character behind whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, I still thought Pennywise was pretty damn scary. Um, do, 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 do. again, the, I got, again, I thought the visual, the horror visuals were great in this. Um, there were, and again, well, even though there were like a shit ton of jump scares, most of them worked for me. Like they actually did get me to jolt. They actually did get me to go, uh, even though there were a handful of like supposed jump scares that ended up just being gross, but other than that, I definitely do recommend this. Um, horror, horror junkies will love this mostly. Pro probably, yeah. Mostly for just the way up, uh, grim and dark, grim dark, grim atmosphere, dark tone, and characters you don't want to see die. I suppose. Okay, I can I can give it that credit there which is above a lot of horror movies i actually do care about the characters involved absolutely i love i still love all these kids yeah so there's there's that um can we, can we talk about the audience for a little bit oh uh, okay like you know how picky uh of audiences he's with i was still like looking back at the people behind us who were constantly saying oh Oh, this is scary! Oh, he, oh, why does he need that? Why does he need that knife? It's the knife that he fucking lost. Oh my god! And then it's in. Oh, this is scary! Oh, this is scary! And one of the girls is like, "Are you crying? Are you really crying?" And then one of them's leaving. One guy, okay, one of the weirder aspects. One yep. guy, I think, was kicking out his drunk friend. Yeah, because this, uh, it was actually during a quiet moment too. The, uh, this guy, oh yeah, fuck him because he had a man bun. I wish I had a scissor so I could just go up to him and cut it off. But yeah, he just, he's at the, um, uh, he's at the like hallway or whatever from the like from the opening to the theater. He just randomly says. That's why you don't fucking drink and go see a horror movie with gore. And then just walks back to his seat. And he says, fucking moron. Uh, okay, why can't you be a little bit quieter? I know I'm loud as hell, but at least I, at least whenever I, like, I try not to talk during a movie, but... Oh, when... bullshit. Anyway, I at least try and whisper as quietly as I can. I don't try and distract other people besides him. One of the guys was kicking my seat. I really couldn't handle that. If I was you, I would have just gotten up. I would have just stood up and turned around and t asked him, please, stop. 
And oh yeah, so and, then, and everybody would not stop talking. The the people behind us, they were only like three. Our theater was full, and we have one of the smaller theaters. We of course got put into the ass end of the theater because this dickhead didn't want to see the seven o'clock show. Oh my fucking god, woe is me. I wanted to spend more time with you. I'm just saying, if we would have gone earlier, we would have gotten the big screen. Uh, well, if we would have gotten bigger screen, we would have gotten, like, more enhanced sound, which would have been worse for your ears. Ha, huh, I'm still thinking about you in the end. My earplugs would have would have done it anyway, but whatever. <laughs> All right, well, needless to say, yes, this audience w did not make the experience any Fuck better. this audience. Yeah. <sighs> Maybe not the worst audience. I mean, it's still... It still wasn't kid kid levels of obnoxious, oh, okay, like yeah. like seeing a. Uh, Although the, I an think there were a hand, I think there were a handful of, like not like children, but like preteens in this. Oh yeah, probably. Oh, the scariest movie I've ever seen in my life. Hell no. Well, then again, we've watched so many horror movies that it that oh it, yeah. There is rarely play, something that comes around that... I've played video games that are considered to be the scariest video games ever made, and they suffer from the same problems as this. They're all jump scares. Ooga booga booga. Yes. And, okay, Except that's, the, that, that's another thing against Pennywise. Whenever he's, like, about to do his, like, pre-kill crazy face it's the it's literally he's shaking he around does, he does this silent hill thing where it's the the, the <laughs> he's, sh he's shaking so fast that he's blurring the camera and yeah you could easily just replace the screaming with ooga booga 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 and it'll instantly turn hilarious yeah speaking of there are a lot of really good parodies of it he's sh and he showed me one beforehand yeah it, with Rod on McDonald. That might be also what took away a little bit of the horror aspect of this movie is because when you... You fucking did that to yourself. I, you know, I, I know I did, okay? But it's it, it's hard not to because even parodies of the original are still so Can't good. Can't you save that until after you've seen the main movie? Because then it'll be funnier. I couldn't help. I couldn't help it. All right. Next time, have more self control. I mean, there's stuff. I mean, there's stuff too. Where it's like Pennywise is coming up through the shower, the shower in the original, and the and the sound they're playing like, oh shit, fucking hell! It's like he's trying his damnedest to get up, but he can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <sighs> Anything else? Not much. No. Don't know what we're going to see next. Um, well, we never know what we're going to see next. Yeah. We just play it by ear. Yeah. But then again, a lot of good shit is coming out. Yeah. I can tell you guys this. We're not going to see Wind River because I already saw it. Sorry. And what well, plus, in what, would you consider it uh, an indie movie? In, in Independent. Oh, I thought you meant, I was like, do you mean Indian? No, That's no, me. no, 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 no. Well, you know indie, right? Yes, I do. I, I It was just the fact that this movie contained Native Americans in it. It's like... It, you mean I, I was I, that? That's what confused me. <laughs> Is this like uh, Dances with Wolves, Last of the Mohicans, uh, whatever fucking Indian yeah. movie you could think of? It is kind of it. It does have that indie movie quality to it. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, but but then again, with that, it's limited release, short time. So yeah, just doubt we're gonna be able to just, find another time. Just slot. like Hell or High Water, which it happens to be written by the same guy. It also happens to be really good. Probably on his top five or ten of the year. It it might be again not, only because doing... it only because it has his boy Jeremy Renner. Not just because it has it in him. It's because it, 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 it has it in him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um. Oh, Kingsman, 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 Kingsman. Oh, Isn't that right. coming out? Is that coming out next weekend or the weekend after? I think it's coming out the weekend after. Okay. Absolutely. The the only good movie by Matthew Va Matthew Vaughn, fuck kick ass. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that might yeah. be what we see, and if not, well, we'll let you know. So we'll see it when we get there. I tried to act like Pennywise. Fail. You'll float too. My chins are floating. <laughs> Damn it. 
All right, bye, everyone.